You worry about your money, I'll worry about mine. Little red missing hood. Oh yeah, baby. Got her rolling now. Warning, we're just having fun. If you take stuff too serious, this channel may not be for you, buddy. <laughs> I can see the disappointment in some of y'all. I can smell some excitement around here though, because damn it, I'm excited. In the last video, I kind of showed some of these tires and I said, hey everybody, give your best guess what these are for. A lot of people said, Mama's Yukon. I think someone even made it through in the travel law, which would be weird. But as you see here, we only got four lugs. And if y'all watch the channel enough, y'all know there's only one four lug unit around here. And that old four lugger sitting outside. <laughs> it's a Toyota Corolla. <laughs> This is something I've wanted to do to that car since I bought it over six years ago, okay? So, I'm excited. It's happening. Let's check out the Corolla real quick. If anyone wants to throw down, we only race for pinks, and we whip ass on Tuesdays and Thursdays only. We're booked out for four weeks. I mean, come on. How can you look at that and not get excited? I did just notice something. I think these tires are called foursome. That's good, because that's how we're going to have to get them on there when someone goes, how the hell did you get those on there? Hell, we had to force them. So when I lived down in Louisiana, I drove clunkers. Well said clunkers, I either blew the engines in or they couldn't even make it up here to Oklahoma. After four years and a couple Greyhound bus trips later, I thought, hey dummy, why don't you buy a little gas getter? Only problem with a little gas getter is a little gas getter is not cool no matter what you do to it. After two weeks of owning this car, I wanted to lift it, put some big tires on it, and cut the son of a bitch into the El Camino. And then we've got us uh, going through the junkyard type rig. It's perfect, it's perfect folks. It's what this channel needs. Let's walk around the old Ebola Corolla and see what she's working with. Workhorse. Other than no car wash in six years, old girl's actually pretty damn clean. And if you're like me when I pop the hood on this thing for the first time, here's the answer to that question. No, that ain't a custom long tube. That's the damn air intake. That's disappointing. I've never put a battery in it. I don't even hold the battery down. She self holds. Had to put a master cylinder on after I got it. Had to put an alternator on it after I got it. And you may notice there's a transmission cooler about twice the size of the radiator on this thing. Within a month and a half, the damn transmission went out. Few bumper scratches, cause, well, sometimes you just gotta shove stuff around like some old projects. When this thing's idling and you think it's starting to lift or tick, it's just the bumper clapping. This old retired Air Force strap has the perfect hook that just kind of locks right in there. And then this puppy's ready to pull down a house. During the transmission process, it did get two new CV axles, which maybe you can see the leaking engine keeps those well lubricated. Matching hubbies all the way around. Got her first whiskey dent just about six months ago. Tech tip of the day, don't back up with your door open. Zero turn one, Corolla zero. Steering wheel covers cherry. Rear view's big enough I can see Hong Kong in the son of a bitch. <laughs> Got my Blues Clues notepad for when I find a clue. Headliner looks like Freddy Krueger was doing the damn Macarena in here. Headliner looks like Wolverine was trying to swat a fly. Headliner looks like Edward Scissorhands was practicing spirit fingers. The headliner looks like all three of them SOBs were having a rock, paper, scissor contest. Now off of gas, I was only getting 33 miles to the gallon. So switching to propane actually got me to about 56. I don't really know Terry that well, but he seems like an all right guy. Custom tearaway graphics back there on the paint. I don't know what in the damn garden I was hauling in here. <laughs> So I tell y'all, use this thing like a little work truck. I think there's some rat poop. <laughs> Racing parachute down there. 
Oh shit, I'm going too fast, I can't stop. Works every time. Now obviously I just held that there to demonstrate, but usually this has a twist lock and it just connects right there. Inside the bed of the work truck, we got a Mexican blanket. Looks like we got a moving blanket. Trunk panels that are supposed to go somewhere and I don't know who the hell was trying to build a sand castle in here. Now, I hope I didn't impress y'all too much. Uh, first thing we're gonna look at doing for the Corolla Mino project is getting her lifted. Got the old lift kit here off eBay. Now come to find out these are just a hard rubber spacer. Now these are like 40 millimeters, which is the equivalent of not damn big enough because those old girthy tires, I don't know if we're going to get them to clear with this, but I do have a Sawzall. I don't know guys, we're just going to get into it. That's it. The best I can tell, all right, they sent me some long studs. I'm assuming we remove the strut, we knock out short studs, we put in long studs, add spacer, put her back. I think we'll just try one side at a time and see what happens. Pop our hubby off. <laughs> Go away, it sounds like a freaking pelican's here. We're in Oklahoma. Get your pelican sounding ass out of here. If anyone likes winning drag races, I will have this slightly used set of tires up for sale soon. Confession time. I've never actually replaced a strut or removed a strut before. It looks like we got two bolts and three up here. Everyone needs to invest in one of these dual purpose units. Got a solid knee pad. Creeper. Well, that seems simple enough. Basically, we just index this thing until it's gonna clear that stud. Then you beat it like it owes you money. Ta-da. Now, if the new ones go in that easy, we'll be stepping in high cotton. Now we gotta see about compressing these. I don't have a spring compressor. I recommend to absolutely nobody to do this. The knurled part of this stud is actually bigger than the old one, so that's not actually sliding in there. Looks like we're gonna have to drill that out some. So I got us a solution here. We're gonna hit her with the Oklahoma two-step. The Oklahoma two-steps when you swap your drill to two and you put in your step bit. We're gonna step these holes out to about three-eighths of an inch and that's a tight fit, but you can hammer it and get them down in there, so I think that'll work. I know that's stupid over there, but I'm not going in front of it. I'm going around and staying to the side of it. So, yes, it's stupid. I'm trying to still be safe about being stupid. Is that possible? Probably not. Drop our new stud in there. Take a good deep well. Now, for whatever reason, if those weren't biting good enough and these spin, we could tack it, but I don't think we're gonna have a problem. Careful, mate. This little bugger here is pissed. We're gonna approach her from the side and hope she don't attack. To all my Australian people, I'm sorry. I don't know what the hell that was. I've told y'all I can't do accents. There we go. One extra large set of studs coming right up. This is a do as I say, not as I do moment. Get a spring compressor. Let me guess. I was supposed to pay attention to what stud went where. Maybe, maybe not. I may tell you building a full chassis is no problem, but then it's simple stuff like this that I ain't done before that. Well, I'm just not gonna act like I know everything on folks. So luckily for me, I look back in this video and I could tell where it goes. So, you know, just start a YouTube channel, spend 15 hours each making videos, and you get kind of benefits like that. You also get good benefits of making like 
four cents an hour for all of your time invested into it. <laughs> There we go, ready to do the disco party. Got her slid up into place. Gonna be careful to give these a snug a dugga and not a ugga dugga. Torque those by hand. Passenger side, zip, zang, bang, boom, done. I don't even think it took 10 minutes. Now let's see if these uh, wheels and tires are actually gonna clear on the front. I'm not gonna hold my breath here, folks. Hmm. <laughs> All right, let's see. Holy crap. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna lie. It is sitting a little higher than what I pictured it, and that's a good thing. I was worried it wasn't gonna sit high enough, but if the back will match the front, that's looking bitching. I'm fairly certain it's probably gonna rub if we try to turn. <laughs> Just barely right there on the plastic, we can trim all of that. I'm not too worried about that. I am pretty damn impressed. I just turned around, we're only rubbing on the front, and I had to pull that fender off to straighten out those door hinges when Dummy took it out with the zero turn. And that fender well ain't where it's supposed to be, and that's the only reason it's rubbing. The passenger side don't even rub. That's okay with me, folks. Now, it'll probably ride like a wood-wheeled wagon, but I guarantee you our top speed on the old highway just got a little higher. This thing's only a three speed. It don't even have overdrive. When I bought this thing, I just did a quick little test drive on base. I got off work that night, was headed home. I thought, hell, I'll take the freeway. Getting on the on-ramp, first gear to second gear, second gear to third gear, third gear at like 35 miles per hour. Finally get up to 60, 65, 70. I'm waiting for this son of a buck to shift and it never shifts. Then I think about newer cars and I'm like, oh hell, it's got that overdrive button on the shifter. Uh, no the hell it don't. The third gear is a one to one ratio and I think it's like 373 gears even. <laughs> now the reason I say that's funny is I told y'all I was driving old Chevy clunkers, 350 turbos, 373s. Well, I pretty much bought Toyota's version. Unknowingly though, I may add. I don't even know where a strut goes on the rear. Alrighty. Sir Yaps a lot's barking next door again. Well, 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 look what I found. <laughs> Here's the hat I should have had on the whole time. The back don't look like it's gonna be too bad. Uh, let's check her out real quick. We got our three nuts up there. And similar style, looks like we got a clip for the brake line on this one. Two bolts and then a sway bar end link. Let's pull this puppy out of here. Put your hand up on your hip, and then you pull the brake clip. This is the, ow, dummy. DB Cooper can get his damn Cessna out of here. I could keep recording. Now over here, y'all won't have this problem because you'll do the right thing and get a spring compressor. This one's not near as aggressive. 
find some kind of combo here that kind of gets that close. That right there may work. That'll do it to it. I was kind of iffy on it, ordering it off eBay, but I'm pretty impressed. And I put this back on, put the spacer on, put the nut on, torqued her down. Now we run into this problem where the socket's stuck on here. I think it's actually wedged inside this piece. Shade tree tech tip of the day. When that old half inch socket gets stuck, just clamp you a set of vice grips on there. Come down on the handle of her with another pair and get your favorite sledge out. There you go. We're gonna release the spring compressor. And we are done. Well, damn it. I guess we've hit our first real problem. The tire hits the damn strut. That ain't gonna work. Shit the bed. Uh, it looks like it needs probably about three to three and a half inches of spacer to clear. Uh, man spacers, wheel spacers, we're just not friends like that. Uh, plus, I think these things would look good tuck-in, so let me show you what I'm maybe thinking here. I think if we disconnect all this, we remove that where the strut can go up higher, maybe we can move this hole to this hole. Now, obviously, we're going to have to add some stuff to then stabilize this. But that's better than being dead in the water. Then we get our tire on here. And she ain't sticking out like one of them uh, coal rolling units that, you know, hit the mall parking lots. If you drive one of them, don't get too upset. I'll come flex with you at the mall whenever I get this baby all together. So I think I'm going to measure this. Now I may throw a, a little extra on there, maybe an eighth or so. Uh, but basically I want to come over here. We're going to drill a new hole on the strut mount. And then we'll add a new lower tab to it somehow and plate it up somewhere or another. Welding on a strut, that sounds fun. Lock that baby down. Nothing a little eyeball won't fix. I just repeated that same process on the back and I'm going to drill us a pilot hole, then we're going to drill it out, and, well, we're going to have a new bolt hole, basically. <laughs> Custom struts, baby. Now with that wobble bit. I moved the center line over about an eighth inch and well that was to allow a little material to remain there. Now is it enough material? Well time will tell. I think so though. Now the other problem we're going to have is we're going to have to grind a little bit of material off the back of that cast piece, the spindle or whatever the heck you want to call it. We are definitely creating our weak point here. Work that baby in there just right. Let's see if it's enough. Oh yeah, it is. Look at that, we just r and d a lift kit. <laughs> we need to add a tab down here to keep this from being able to rotate. I know welding into this is not ideal, but you know, we have all this to weld on and we'll cool it off not do nothing too dumb and I think we'll be all right people looky here fixing a problem now, I bet some of y'all were worried about some geometry here well don't let this dumb accent fool you or my lack of proper English now that I'll give you I'm slacking in that department but math I was always good at and I did check this angle with the factory stuff all tightened up before I took any of it apart and right now I got a old ratchet strap up here pulling it that away and I set this back to the angle it was. Hell, who knows, we may end up with some proper geometry. We're hitting the body. I'm gonna tighten this baby down and make sure we're gonna actually clear back there because it's feeling pretty damn close. We may have to space this, but you know, a quarter inch is better than three. It's very hard to get the camera in there, but there is daylight between there. 
there's most our rubbing problem but that's a lip and that lip can come off that's for damn sure about as simple as a template i could come up with i'm gonna go cut this out some quarter inch plate see how it makes the edge pretty don't touch hot hot look good yeah el, el rey approved yeah. Yeah. yeah take our old tab here slide our bolt in i may add that fits very well so i think i'll bevel this edge here where we can get a good weld in there and honestly i'll think i think that'll be enough with one on the front and one on the back this tab will work on the front side of this so basically i need to cut four more of these so we got enough for each side we're gonna have to be careful where we throw them sparks my britches are fr but they don't work if they got a damn hole in them Y'all don't wear around FR pants every day. Every day is FR day. Going to see family. Going on a date night. Getting married. FR. All I own is FR britches. If y'all see me get out a pair of my nice pants, more than likely there's going to be a dance floor around and well, you're fixing to see pudding cut a rug. Took the old wire brush here and just ran this whole edge to get as much crap off there as possible. Gonna slap each side a quick little tacky tack. All right, we've officially got a super custom strut here, folks. We got a socket and a little piece of brass, a shim stock, C clamped, hopefully keep that thing from moving around. pretty happy with that so we've got us a custom strut we did just tie all that metal together and well we're never gonna whoop on this baby so hard that i honestly think this will ever be a problem so as far as i'm concerned that's way better than all them wheel spacers we were gonna have to run so look at that <laughs> new morning new me new lens on the old welding helmet thought i may want to see this morning out of it also new decisions made I decided, besides adding the lift to the strut, let's go ahead and put that spacer in there and put this rear together. Now, if it looks like too much, if it looks goofy, <laughs> you know, we don't want our lifted Corolla to look goofy. We need some proportions. If it's too much, we'll take it out. I happen to get lucky and actually have a longer bolt that would work. One relief cut and I'm gonna whoop on it. I did find a little bit of frosted flakes here. <laughs> Look at all that clearance back there now. <laughs> oh, oh, it's looking like it's gonna work, ain't it? That really didn't do too bad. And yeah, we're gonna require a little paint touch up, but well, if we cut the top off this thing, we will too, won't we? This stuff I'm not too impressed with but that's better than more rust here's our moment of truth if i was a betting man i would say we're gonna be adding some more lift to the front <laughs> oh oh that looks so much better we've got to lift the front i don't know if we're gonna run into problems with cv axles but we've got to try it because that looks bitching the cv axle is already with no weight on the car at its max we're hitting the ar mount because this one's so short we don't have that problem but the problem we have is it's so short <laughs> this one will have a ridiculous crazy angle on it i mean it's gonna be like eh, it's gonna be too much honestly yesterday if i would have bolted in that rear spacer and it would have worked like the front did we would have been done this is going to turn into a lot of work and i didn't really even plan on this taking more than a day i think we're going to bolt the front back together i'm going to pull the spacer out of the rear we're just gonna lift it the inch and a half all the way around and see how she looks. You see me at the Chili's later next to the mall with a tire up on the curb and they're hitting the two for one margaritas. Don't worry about it, we're just flexing. Who loves it, who hates it? Comment down below. I freaking love it. I think we nailed it. I think the proportions look a lot better with the 
ass in, lower down. Now we're not doing so much the grasshopper legs. You know what I mean? I took her and gave her a little elbow, hit her with the foam brush. First time she's been washed in I don't know how many years. And I just actually think it looks badass. I'm digging it. She's a little slow to get up to speed on the highway. The speedometer may be a little off, but that's all right. I've got a marker. If you see me ramping, going over some curbs, or towing a trailer, don't be surprised. It may only be Wednesday, but we're two days early for Flex Friday, so we're flexing for the next three days here, folks. You do not hate this car. You do not hate this car. <laughs> I put nit nitrous oxide on it, so I hope you like yeah. going fast. Oh, hell. We're starting a truck club. <laughs> Scoot the old seats back here. Kind of got me a tape line here. We're just kind of doing some rough mapping out here. Trying to get our brains wrapped around what the hell we're about to do. I told y'all this is the work truck. We got a job on our hands. Yeah, it's um, a clog thingy, and that's why it's um, doing our toilets. Yeah. I have 17 miles of damn sewer line and well it looks like we got a clog going on yeah we're in trouble the snake ain't gonna work looks like i got a job on my hands here folks hello in the field the shitter's clogged got a rolling now right there that whole end's dropped off uh that's what caused it Hey, shout out to all the plumbers for all the crap y'all put up with. <laughs> the shit diggers work. All right, I wasn't planning on putting them through their paces in my backyard because guess who has to mow that this summer, all right? But one, that looks pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. It just kind of looks appropriate with the new look. And two, I will add, if we were on factory tires, we damn sure would have been stuck. Shit diggers did their job. All right. I think it's like a week and a half later now. Not that I'm slacking. We've got other stuff always in the mix. Uh, let's finish up these brackets and, well, I gotta get y'all caught up on where we're at on the old Corolla. Every off-road unit needs some dimple dyes on it somewhere. You go to do your old dimple dyes, make sure to face those babies the right way, you know, depending on your situation. Nothing worse than spending the time hand cutting little brackets like that and then you do it the wrong way and, well, you're back to the start. Back to the damned old beginning. All right, that we ain't tight. All right. As you can see, that looks like hammered hill. Unless you need a bracket with a curve or a gusset. Little little trick I've learned: take your dimple die. We're going. We're going to run it back, and we force her back down. Now you ain't got to hawk smash that. It'll lay it flat pretty easy. There we go. Nice flat plate again with a bitchin' looking one inch dimple die in her. Now old dimple die guess it may look pretty good about right in there. But as you may notice, these windows are now dark. We've got a roof rack, so obviously we've got some catching up to do here. So let's get caught up. Then we'll finish our roof rack. Some chrome lug nuts that are shiny like a hiney straight off the eBay. They're like 14 bucks and well, these look awful, so why not? I've wanted the windows tinted on this thing forever, so I finally had it done, felt like it was time. But some idiot didn't have them add the strip and I don't know why I wish I would've. These old headlights had more fog than a Scooby-Doo episode and well, the insides are so yellow that it looks like a smoker's lived in them. I know you can restore these, but these puppies were cheap on eBay too. 
This thing's starting to turn into the eBay special. May notice some new scratches because this thing's been shoving stuff around here. And I actually did unload a <laughs> quite the project off a trailer the other night. Told you'd pull it off there. <laughs> Little crow is a beast. He said, How are we gonna unload this thing? You think your truck will pull it off? I said, Nope, but I got the Corolla and she's ready. He didn't think he was gonna do it, but now he's a believer. Uh, that brings us up to where we're at, which is getting this roof rack finished up. Now, this roof rack's one of them, you know, time versus money kind of deals. Who can guess where I bought this? If you guessed eBay, I'll send you a sticker. I'm just playing because I know everybody guessed eBay. Yeah, I got it off eBay. Um, I'm actually kind of happy I went this route. Now, I'm not planning on putting, you know, three tons on the roof of this thing. Uh, I guess I need to tell you, I'm not going to cut it into El Camino, which is probably why I had the windows tinted. I just, I don't have the heart to do it. I like this thing a lot now. Uh, if we do do it, it's going to be in the future. It ain't going to be now. Now, when I tell you, I just kind of eyeballed this thing. I kind of cut that piece and sat it there, drew a line there, measured up about three quarters of an inch and just kind of added some lines and yeah, here we are. Uh, I know you think I'm crazy probably, but I honestly think I'm just going to weld this thing on here because I'm never going to take it off and I don't think anyone else will ever own the car. <laughs> Maybe that'll keep the glass from getting tore up, assuming we don't start a fire on the old blankets here. Uh, basically, I'm gonna grind off as much, as little paint as possible, square it up and try to get this thing all tacked up where I want it. All humidity may be working in our favor here. So I just kind of bent those over each side a little bit, bend it in where that'll sit on that. We're going to do a clean up, get a tack, kind of do the same with the back and well, she'll be mocked up. Five and seven eighths. <laughs> Five and seven eighths. Now we've got a long process and that's welding this up without burning up the headliner. Y'all don't want to watch that. It ain't stupid if it works. That stiffened up that old screw together roof rack. <laughs> I don't think she's going anywhere anytime soon. Didn't clean in there good enough, but just did some stitch welding here. Nothing too fancy. We've got a blank canvas right here just asking for some dimple dies or something. You always start with finding your center lines. Well, I do anyhow. I don't know how y'all's does it. Uh, but if I'm being honest, I don't feel like doing math this evening. Hmm. Here I am having to do math. I just offset everything an inch, so I'm done for the day. Little bits ready to play. And told y'all I didn't feel like doing math. Huh? I'm not little, I'm seven. You're not little, you're seven. Oh, let's go hot rod. Okay. But, but by the way, my name is Ella. Here she is, folks. A good night's resting. I'm a little bit better at math today. Yeah, let's check her out. Decided to go with an inch and three quarter and a one inch in between them. Looks pretty good. This is probably my favorite rattle can, Duple Color Semi Gloss Black. Just kind of feathered that, and it actually blended pretty well. It, uh, it's kind of a good in between of the car color and the rat color. 
So it just kind of does this little fade thing. Who would have thunk it? She looks pretty good from three feet away. I'm just saying. All she's missing now is her big back sticker, which I'll have in a couple days, and she'll be done. If I'm being honest with you guys, I kind of liked it better just with the lift and the new wheels and tires. I don't think it needed all the extra. I think it looks extra. <laughs> now, is she as cool as driving one of these two? Well, hell no. But there are certain situations when I do end up having to drive this car, usually in situations where I don't want one of those things getting tore up. And I'd much rather drive it like this than how it looked. So let's do one of those music montage and some beauty shots. I did not get this video out on time, which means now we can actually put her to work a little bit. Sometimes you forget to take your trash out and you get new furniture and you just end up with a lot of trash. If I hear one person say something about, why don't you just get something practical, don't worry about my trash hauler. If anyone wants to know how serious I was about the whole El Camino deal, well, you see me hauling crap right now. Uh, I did go out to DNH Classic uh, weeks ago. Right here, little red missing hood. I didn't realize it was a two-story job, so that that just makes things a little funner. That's all right. Oh yeah, baby. She just ain't gonna get cut down right now. Uh, I don't know. I, I actually really dig it, you know? If we end up cutting this thing into El Camino, it's just gonna be in the future. Not anytime soon. That's good. That's good. Let me answer some of the questions you're thinking right now. Dude, are you serious? Why, yes. Yes, I am. Do you really think that's cool? It's not as boring as the old Corolla was. Why don't you just get a damn truck? Four-wheel drive long bed for all the crap you do. Don't start getting practical on me now. You could have put that money in one of your other projects. You worry about your money, I'll worry about mine. Let's get this thing back to the house and wrapped up. Finally got the whole last piece of the puzzle here. The big old Puddin's Fab Shop sticker. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know someone didn't, but you know what? That thing was actually fun. I've been having fun doing fun stuff, all right? All this serious stuff gets old sometimes. We'll do some more serious stuff in the future. And a lot of people have been asking about merchandise. We've got small stickers. It's the color of the truck. We've got some bigger stickers, color of the travel all. 
Uh, I did get my first sample. This is using a website called Printify. And when we do, when I use Printify, they print on demand and it makes it where we can have several t-shirt designs, white, gray, black. They print it, ship it straight to you guys. Uh, this is a fresh shirt. It looks good on camera, but I'm telling you on person, it looks a little faded. Uh, it, not a bad looking shirt. It just looks like it's been washed a couple times. So y'all let me know what you think. Uh, doing it that way, I can get y'all stuff. So uh, I hope y'all enjoyed. Merchandise coming soon. If you're on Instagram, I'm on there at Puddin's Fab Shop. And I will see you guys next time. But don't forget, sitting on your ass won't finish your project. That's going on a t-shirt too. Right here. Little red missing hood.